yeah so uh firstly uh welcome everyone hope you all had a good weekend and uh yeah i think uh when amit reached out to me about like you know doing something uh for the angelic legion um had a few ideas but then i think we both settled on doing uh this particular idea of a quiz based uh uh a, a quiz based you know around mythology as any most of you guys must be knowing or must have heard or at least i'm a bit of a mythology enthusiast i you know uh, apart from putting out videos on like you know my social media and all on mythology i've been indulging in mythology for a long time so mm-hmm. i always uh, you know i i think i have a you know a little bit of a fascination just on storytelling and all but more importantly i feel like you know mythology is a very good place for us to like you know get to know each other and the way we interpret mythology and all sometimes tells us more about ourselves than about the mythology itself so based on that i kind of uh, you know had this thinking why don't we do a uh, you know a quick quiz now i'll be honest like initially i had this idea that this quiz should be a cutthroat you know hunger style game where you know we will have these things but uh, we'll make it a bit more fun i would uh, you know uh, i mean obviously there will be right and wrong answers and uh, you know there will be discussions and other things um but like you know we uh, uh, as discussed with amit we won't do a central score keeping and all because i think people will be coming in and all so what we will do is after every round we'll just ask who's got the right answers and uh, i would ask you guys to keep a score on for your own self okay so we can like you know tally it up towards the end you know uh yeah uh, hope that that makes sense hmm? sounds good okay yeah um and also i think uh, you know as of now uh, right now each individual screen is a team so like you know i think all of you guys are on different screen sort of a thing so you are all you know uh, participating for yourself and uh, yeah the rule is very simple i think it as you know um, i mean there will be like four types of activities we'll see you know based on the timing i mean the plan is to have it for just uh, you know uh, uh, one hour and all okay uh, i have extra questions and all just in case we want to do that and all but otherwise we'll just go through it and each activity has different set of rules and uh, things uh, by the way i you know if any of you guys are feeling i don't know enough about mythology or no worries the questions are while based on knowledge um it's uh, m- many of the questions are more about uh, you know deductive reasoning and like you know observation and all uh, but yeah if you do your uh, this thing it's it's always good uh, remember the idea is to have fun but also to just learn new things so feel, you know uh, you know approach this entire uh, you know quiz uh, curiosity and at the same time obviously to see how many things you can get right okay um so with that i'll share my screen and uh, we shall just begin just one second give me uh you can see my screen right yes sir mm. yeah so <clears throat> just one second ah so one thing uh, guys what i would say is um, you know uh, i mean most of the answers you can give it on chat okay feel free to unmute your mic and ask a question if you do have a sort of a thing but the answers are better to be given in the thing until i ask you otherwise okay uh, the the reason of doing it on zoom was that you know the first, it's the fastest finger first kind of a strategy so the idea is that you know when you are able to uh, uh when you are able to like uh, you know answer it just answer it and we'll get a sense of who answered it and, and it's not there's no negative marking so feel free to answer something you know uh, yeah so with that we'll begin the thing uh and thank you i just saw a comment on the you know the illustrations and also i think uh, i've tried to make it a little visual so that at least it's uh, visually interesting but before we do before we get into uh, you know the questions and all i thought i want to have this as a open conversation just for like a minute and all um i'm sure you guys have uh, you know heard these terms right beast and creatures okay and we both we all have an idea of it but i want to ask you guys what is the difference between the word beast and the word creature Hmm? one is wild and one is not one is wild and one is not okay That's not a- wild wild v i l e v v a oh, wild wild okay wild and one is not uh interesting okay and uh, the other uh, this thing uh, anyone else anyone else has a, you know answer the beast is big and creature is small okay big and small okay that's an interesting thing any anyone else yeah beast is usually a associated- with like a negative connotation like like evil creature is more like just a different species i guess yeah sometimes the term even humans as creature i mean humans as i've heard anyone terming us as beast though but yeah looks like we are small and tiny then 
So I, I think you guys have got a very interesting perspective. So um, I'll I'll tell you the the you know the English word definition of what it means is that it's a very interesting thing. Beast is actually anything that is not human. You know, like anytime there is an animal, you know, anything that moves and uh, breathes and uh, this thing is a beast. Okay. While um, a, this thing, a creature, is a is a being that is composite of different uh, things. Okay, so if you have half man, half horse, a centaur, it's a creature. Okay, um, and it's funny. I actually found this out when I had started doing the research. I used to use this word interchangeably and all. So the creature is like you know anything that is not natural. You know, in some way, beast is generally a natural thing because it's just behaving that thing. But having said that, even your interpretation of generally how um, you know in the general uh, you know literature and lexicon. the word beast and uh, you know the creatures are interchanged and all so it's it's there the reason i thought i'll mention this is because uh, throughout the quiz many times i'll be using the word beast or creature and uh, many times that will be a hint okay uh, either to give you guys a hint or maybe to throw you off like depends on the, the thing uh, so just keep a mind uh, you know just uh, just keep an eye on that okay but i hope this was an interesting trivia that all of you guys uh, you know found okay <clears throat> yeah i think the rules i've just told you guys the rules are not very complicated just you know answer right okay just give me one second i think i'm getting a bell ring just give me one second yeah sorry i'm back um great with that uh, let's just uh, go to the next uh, thing So the first activity, okay. Um, whose wah uh, wahan is it? Now, uh, do you guys know the meaning of wahan? What is a wahan? It's a vehicle. Yes. What is it? It's a vehicle. It's a vehicle. Vehicle. Yeah. Perfect. That's the other thing. So as you guys know, um, Hindu mythology has a very very interesting, uh, you know, concept of animal relationship and all, where we have every most gods have a uh, have an animal that they consider as vehicle. You know, uh, sometimes logic completely defies it. You have an animal like. ganesha sitting on a small mouse or obviously you know there are creative ways to do that but you have these you know animals uh, that are associated okay now the activity is as simple as the question uh, that is asked that you have to identify which uh, you know like which is god and which uh, vahan uh, you know is a match okay so first of all let's just go through the objective so what you will see initially on the screen is like you will see four deities and you will see four animals below you know the, uh, the the deities are going to be marked 1 to 4 and the animals are going to be marked uh, you know 8 a uh, saying a to d okay all you have to do in the chat right is um you have to look at the animals and you have to put the correct order so you can say 1 a to b or 1 b one sort of a thing and you have to put it on the chat okay there is a timer that will run under you know uh, on the screen you will see it Uh, it's around uh, you know i think 15 to 30 seconds okay so you have to do that as soon as the timer runs out whoever has given the right answers um, you know ultimately we we move ahead we just look at who's got the right answers and all okay and if there is anything i'll give you guys a trivia about any of the gods and all okay uh, <clears throat> cool are we ready with this i just have a doubt so there are animals in another row each mark those are, those are all options is it okay you you will give four options as i answer Yeah, there will be four. Uh, you know, the thing as you see, the, the multiple choices, okay. and there are four animals. All you have to do is it's a match the column kind of a thing. But the way to match the column is you just have to put it as one A to B, comma 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 uh, on the chat. Okay? okay, so just be ready with your fingers, guys. Uh, as soon as you see it, and I'll start the timer. Uh, the timer will run only if you know you'll just see a yellow mark that is uh, filling it in. Okay, as soon as the timer mm -hmm. gets over, we'll see uh, this thing. So in this one, it's not about who gets it first. Uh, it's about how many of you guys get it right okay so just remember that okay so if you get it right um, you know you get the you know uh, you get the points that you can do uh, you know keep for yourself okay um okay cool are you guys ready yes okay uh i'm keeping the chat window open just for my this thing <laughs> great uh so round 1 this is the thing okay You guys can uh, put the thing, okay? Time. 
timer has started guys try to give all the combinations you don't have to worry about getting it wrong as so it's more about getting it uh, you know getting as many as this thing i see a lot of answers coming in oh nice uh okay interesting uh, vishwas has not attempted all of them come on uh, uh, you know rest of you guys just answer all of it okay great great uh and the timer has stopped oh i see someone uh, some of you guys sneaked in last minute uh, you know so a few answers that's great i think you guys have done a good job okay so now uh, let's go to the you know let's go to the thing oh nice varsha you just managed to do it just when the last uh, timer was <laughs> about to finish off okay great okay we'll move ahead to the next uh, like i will move ahead to the answers itself okay and uh, you guys can see how many of you got it right and all okay uh <clears throat> so first of all very interestingly indra is uh, with eravat the most one of the most famous elephants in um, you know uh, in indian mythology you must have, you must have heard of the stories and all okay uh, it is the elephant and obviously his name is eravat okay um, saraswati i think most of you guys must be knowing i see a lot of people have got uh, 2a 2a that's that's perfect okay uh, yeah i don't think anyone got it uh, you know wrong in that sense uh, sort of a thing that's great okay what is uh, interesting is that um, you know uh, saraswati swan ha doesn't really have a name okay it's, uh, it's called hans uh, you know uh, but hans is basically swan unlike eravat and all sort of a thing a uh, lot of you guys have got uh, yamraj's answer the thing okay sorry i think i and then there is uh, kartike kartike is very well known for you know peacock and sort of a thing interestingly peacock is the only animal that is associated with two gods okay uh, you guys know which is the other god that he's associated with krishna obviously <laughs> yeah aditya krishna answered the right answer okay um, cool so now that you got this thing let's do one more round this is just a fun uh, activity and all okay let's see if you guys can get the second round itself okay uh, ready for the second round yeah 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 okay you guys can start guessing okay the timer has started oh this is really tough just just answer anything it doesn't matter mm. even if you get one this thing and that's the point you know the levels are going to get tougher <laughs> Yes, the answers are coming. I'll give you guys ten more seconds. That's okay, you know. And some of the answers will surprise you, you know. <laughs> okay. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, great. I think you guys have given the answers. cool cool i think we'll move to the actual answers and all okay nice a few people have sneaked in the last minute answers to see okay uh, yeah let's see how many of you guys uh, okay so how many of you guys got it right i think 2c is uh, you know uh, 2d okay yeah that's the right answer hmm? so here's a interesting fact i'll tell you guys okay so agni dev is one of the gods that is associated with a ram that is can withstand fire uh, but as in very few of the you know the puran sort of a thing in many uh, purans it's also uh, you know it's a rhino which is there uh, funnily they've never mentioned the name so it's very interesting uh, lakshmi is on a owl which is i don't know as cute as it's hilarious for me because just the idea of lakshmi traveling on an owl and uh, the owl's name is ulluk you know that's where uh, that's uh, it's called okay uh, again this these these gods they're not as well known sort of a thing i mean it's only when you kind of see their imagery and all then you will see so chandradev as ant as saying antelope which i find very fascinating because uh, the idea of a moon and antelope is almost you know is akin to the idea of santa claus going in reindeers like you know against the moon's uh, skylight so i do feel that there is a there's some commonalities with the idea of you know these reindeer and antelope animals being associated with some sort of a you know lunar kind of a deity you know uh yeah and kamdev is with parrot he sits on a parrot and all sort of a thing in fact uh, parrot is also assumed to be one of his forms you know so again very interesting in the information and all i i know it's surprising many of you guys are saying i see some of you guys have also got it right in some place some places so that's interesting 
I uh, personally feel antelope could have been for Indra instead of say Chandra. Yeah, yeah. Just because of the horns, if you see the way it is, ah, uh, lightning. That that's interesting. Oh. Answer to me, yeah. So which one uh, actually leaves out the thunder? Uh, I don't know who, which god. That's Indra. Indra. Indra only, no? Yeah. Huh. Indra is uh, with the uh, this thing, elephant and uh, this thing, you know, Arab. Yeah. Uh, but but that's the thing. I mean, uh, this thing, Rama. The very interesting thing is that you know these are not fixed. In fact, the second round I made it tougher because it's just uh, you know these are not very well known uh, figures. But in many of the stories, they change it also. Like the idea of uh, Lakshmi and Owl being associated is it's just mentioned in passing and sort of the thing. But generally, these animals are associated with their own thing. You know, mm. uh, so. That's great. I think, uh, you know, any of you guys knew the answers for sure? Or did you, uh, you know, like uh, any of you knew any of the answers for sure that you know, to, uh, you know, which God is associated with which deity? Three, three owl I knew for sure. Other uh, new information for me. Yeah, that's great. Uh, hope this was a good learning and a good uh, thing appetizer for you guys in terms of the quiz. So now we will move ahead. Okay. And the new game it's a different rule altogether okay and in this um uh, the rule uh once again yeah so all you have to do in his, this one is i'm going to tell you a story just like maybe less than a minute and sort of a thing okay just here are the details okay there will be clues hidden in it where i will mention a creature okay or a beast or something okay and then i will show you images and you have to tell me which creature is you know it is okay this is a guess work but at the same time a deduction game uh this thing and you will have options and you'll have to just give me a thing this one is about who gets it first okay this one is about getting first but obviously if you get it right you still like you know you still can consider getting a point okay but we'll at least call out the person who gets it first okay um so are you guys ready hmm? yes okay awesome So the story is, you know, of Sharab. Okay, um, Narsim Avtar, if you have known not heard about him, is um, you know a Vishnu Avtar. He is this half uh, lion and you know body of a man and this thing. And he came out of a pillar to kill Hirnakashyap, you know, who was sort of a rakshas and uh, you know who's an asura. And uh, ultimately, after you know after killing him, after ripping his chest and you know uh, reinstating Prahlad, the story goes further. The story goes that uh, Narsim Avtar did not return back as Vishnu. In fact, he kept going around uh, the world, terrorizing people, uh, roaring and beating and killing people and sort of a thing to the point that all the devtas were, were freaked out. You know, they ultimately ended up going to Shiv and said that, you know, please do something about uh, Vishnu. I mean, if he continues doing this, the entire earth is going to be destroyed. So can you do something? So Shiv, out of his meditation, comes out and decides that, you know what, I'll stop him. And he takes the form of Sharab. Okay? He takes the form of this Sharab, which is a sort of a creature, and uh, he glides over and with his talents, picks up uh, uh, Narsim Avtar and completely de-skins him, you know, so that, uh, you know, Vishnu can come out. Okay? The story ends there. Hmm? Now, what you have to do is guess which one is Sharab from the options. Hmm? I have given you guys clues, so think about it, okay? Your time starts now. All you have to do is just type on a chat, uh, whoever gets it first, and this thing, just, just, just type anything, you guys, it's more important and sort of a thing, okay? Yeah, to be fair, uh, these are modern art depictions. Obviously, there's there will be some changes. Different way, uh, versions have a different, um, you know, uh, rendition and all. But one is more closer to uh, this thing. Yeah, so uh, this thing, Nar uh, Narsim is like, you know, it's Vishnu on a Thanos mode. So imagine something that can kill Thanos or something that can hurt Thanos, which is where Marvel is moving right now. So that's exactly the story, you know. <clears throat> Great. The time stops. Now, anyone wants to give a last minute answer can just do that in the next, in the last uh, three seconds. Uh, okay, great. Manik managed to squeeze in an answer. Uh, great. Cool. So now I will show you guys the, uh, the answer. The answer is the fourth one. Sharab is the, you know, it comes from Indian mythology, which is sort of a lion-esque figure with wings and all. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of you guys got the fourth answer. Uh, <clears throat> how many of you guys knew the answer or how many of you guys are uh, saying, you know, like thought, you know, to get, get, guess it. Wild guess. That's I think it. Great. No, I think that's on the story. Yeah. 
Okay, so use a story as an example. That, that's great. That's the point of the thing. Okay, just to give you guys a little bit of a trivia, <clears throat> who are the other gods? Uh, the other gods are actually for... Uh, <laughs> that's true, Ishan. I think the... In fact, uh, I had a hard time finding Sharab, which doesn't look like, uh, you know, like an iconography that will give away because most of the Sharab features have this idea of, uh, you know, sh uh, uh, this thing, uh, Shiv, uh, you know, like that, uh, his Tika and all those things are there, okay? Uh, and by the way, just to give you an interesting fact, uh, Egyptian mythology, Amit. So Amit is this creature where Egyptians believe in a lot of underworld where you go through, after you die, you have to, you know, have your heart weighed. If any of you guys have seen uh, Moon Knight, you must have uh, seen this sort of a thing. But the idea is that your heart is to be weighed against a feather. And if it's heavier than the feather, which means you've done more wrongs in life. Uh, if, if not, then you would get to go to the heaven version of, uh, you know, Egypt. But otherwise... Amit as a creature will devour your heart and you will go out of oblivion. Okay. Uh, Rakshas, as you guys know, you know, I mean, there are different uh, renditions of it. Uh, interestingly, this thing, Gajasimha is actually a rendition of uh, Ganesh and an elephant from the Cambodian mythology, okay, um, which again is a composite itself. So I see a lot of people answer too, which makes sense because I did say glide and I said, uh, you know, uh, the you know, talent like uh, hands and all. Okay. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a visualization, right? So that you understand how the story goes. So this is taken from like different uh, comic books and all. I just want to help you guys visualize the story itself. So this is what happens when Narsim goes crazy. Uh, you know, in this form, actually, Sharab is half bird and half lion. But in many other forms, he's, uh, he's not like that. And he actually holds, uh, you know, uh, Nars Narsim Avtar in his hands itself. Just to give you some sense of iconography of how Sharab looks like, this is some of the things. Uh, Sharab is pretty popular with the Shavik traditions. Many of you guys may have even heard of him in terms of this. And in many of them, he's holding or he's cr crushing, uh, you know, uh, Narsim Avtar. Okay. Cool. This I hope this was an interesting uh, fact and like... You know, Very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Also, I, I can see the eagle in that. Not just... Uh, it's a combination of yeah, eagle yeah. And a lion, yeah. Eagle and a lion, yeah. Which is very fascinating because in some places he doesn't have an eagle at all. So I was also mm. getting a little confused about which one to depict. So uh, one thing is very sure that there is some sort of a lion-esque thing, but the eagle part comes out and all. Okay. Mm. Um, and also it's very uh, symbolically, it's a very fascinating thing that there's eagle associated with because eagle is associated with Vishnu. Vishnu has Garud. So the fact that uh, Shiv took a form that has eagle in it is almost sort of insulting. It's like, you know, okay, like I'm going to take the form that is revered by you to, you know, to put you down, right? <laughs> it's almost like that. Now but, I get the angle of Egyptian hieroglyph in your first. Ah, ah that's true. <clears throat> she looks like a villain of uh, this avatar, Sharaf avatar. The uh, first one. The first what else? First like option. The uh, first option that you showed there. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. So yeah, that's like a villain in the Sharab movie. Yeah. By the way, he uh, Amit is the real villain in the Marvel show uh, Moon Knight, you know, sort of a thing. You guys should check it out if you are ever interested in Egyptian mythology. They've done a very interesting uh, uh -huh. thing. But, but yeah, that's exactly the thing. In fact, uh, I, uh, I would have thought that that seems like something like, you know, uh, what Shiv should have taken up to, you know, hunt down the thing. <laughs> For some reason, I think uh, with the word Sharab, I imagined a snake. Uh, oh, maybe a wild snake. Yeah. 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 No, uh, Rishabh, Amit is not a snake. Amit is half crocodile and half uh, this thing. You know, it's not a uh, this thing. In, in fact, uh, it's uh, a, it's actually a crocodile, but in some this thing, it's a, you know, it's a composite of a crocodile and a lion kind of a, this thing. Mm -hmm. In many of the hieroglyphs, right, Rishabh, it's uh, the the person who's weighing the scales has uh, it's generally Anubis, and uh, next to Anubis there is a spirit creature standing waiting for the heart to devour the heart. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, Egyptians have a trick around that. So, like how we have yagnas and all, and we do the bribing of gods so that we can go through it. Egyptians also have to carry. There's a reason why there's so much mummification and like uh, things. People, you know, the, all these pharaohs and all carry it because they want to make sure that in case a heart doesn't align with the feather, they can bribe the gods and ultimately go to it, you know. So we have figured out ways to like, you know, go around the gods and all, you know, gods become like traffic cops where you just need to bribe them and get to the right stage. Uh, cool. We we'll go to the next round. Uh, now that you guys have got an idea, you, you know, you can, uh, let's do the second round itself. So <clears throat> now the next story. Okay. So the story goes way further. Okay. Uh, now that Sharab tried to attack, uh, you know, uh, 
narsim avatar you know narsim avatar obviously is vishnu you know vishnu gets really really angry you know like how dare you know you attack me so what happens is this thing uh, narsim ends up like you know transforming and out of it vishnu becomes a uh, thing gandvarun okay and in that he just uh, you know he ultimately like you know uh, goes over uh, sharab and ultimately like you know uh, you know starts fighting with him uh, picks him up throws him around there is a complete uh, you know sort of a devastating war that happens between them leading to a you know uh, an, uh, you know almost an annihilation of the world everyone starts panicking saying that you know okay, if both the two gods are fighting what will happen uh, the problem here is that you know like uh, when uh, uh, the thing sharab is trying to move in different directions uh, he is never an out of the eyesight of uh, uh, the thing uh, gandbaron Uh, it's very hard to you know not be from his eyesight even if you go behind and sort of a thing you could just uh, you know turn head heads around and all so finally it comes to a point where they both are about to have and everyone starts praying to them and you know at one point of time uh, you know both the gods realize what they are doing okay i'll stop the story right there i want you guys to first uh, guess who the hell is uh, you know uh, gund baron in these options hmm? the time starts now See the answers coming in. Come on, guys, just get it. Just guess something. It's you know you have nothing to lose. There's no negative points, or at least I'm not maintaining a negative point. Uh, interesting. Okay, the time has stopped. I see you guys have answered. Okay, perfect. Um, I see many of you guys have got it right. You know, it's uh, Gandvarun is the two-headed birds of uh, this thing. In fact. you can see some of the clues in the picture itself where narsim avatar is breaking down and all the other god uh, the other animals are from different mythologies so the persian man uh, you know mythology has the manticore and all <laughs> yeah i think uh, rama you're right the third and fourth are just uh, this thing in fact uh, in i was going to put a you know a red herring in the story where i would say something like you know where he bites and like you know, he swims in water just to throw you guys off but that wouldn't have been a authentic story so uh, yeah the what's interesting is the manticore is actually from the persian mythology if any of you guys have seen the, the pixar movie up you know there is the the creature called manticore a lion sort of a this thing so that comes from that the other two creatures are uh, you know are the thing uh, are from chinese and uh, the thing as a thing uh, as aztec mythologies and all so again these are some weird creatures that have uh, the thing in fact this is saying uh, the aztec mythology creature you know sipatli you know that's what is known as sipatli or sort of a thing again the pronunciations are very tough uh, is again a creature that uh, dwells in the underworld uh, you know eats the people who end up going there and all so people aztec mythology people always had a fear of these uh, you know like going to the underworld and like you know having to deal with it and this is one of the monsters that has to be defeated in the stories okay uh, but just to give you a sense of visualization of what had happened right so i mean you don't uh, you know piss off narsim avatar and expect that you know ki everything will be you know lying down so obviously narsim avatar gets angry transforms into this creature and then the fight happens which finally leads to um, you know both the gods realizing that you know ki okay this is so much devastation and uh, uh, vishnu decides that you know ki okay you know what i don't need this form anymore so he comes out of it and both the you know the deity buddies decide to go back to you know their respective uh, you know realms and like you know live happily after uh this story is contested a lot of the uh, the this thing the shavik traditions do not like the story they think that you know kigan baron is, is an unauthentic story but what's fascinating is that uh, gan baron is uh, you know especially in the south a lot of people have it in fact karnataka flag has gan baron as an emblem so whenever you see a two bird uh, feature sort of a thing that's actually gan baron itself cool we'll just have uh, the next round uh, ishan you've written uh, looks like a way better than... yeah it's uh, someone even said this ki, like uh, you know uh, when i was looking at this sort of uh, you know information and all like what is that episode where vishnu and uh, you know shiv have fought like kaijus and that's actually the first thing people uh, think of it you know i'm just surprised that no one has made a sort of a you know like a cinematic movie on this you know it's it's really fascinating but but definitely definitely like attack of titans <laughs> cool uh the last round okay and this is for people who are interested in mythologies beyond india itself um so in the greek mythology there is a famous hero named belephron okay um belephron is 
uh, the son of Poseidon. So as you guys know, in Greek mythology, many times the gods, they are a little more casual in their relationships and they end up having a lot of relationships with mortals and all. In fact, Zeus is known for his uh, philandering uh, spirit. So to the point that, you know, like they end up having, uh, you know, gods with the mortals and all. So Belephron, um, you know, is the stepson of uh, Poseidon and uh, he wants to prove himself and he uh, you know he really wants to he's a you know he's he's in his youth he has this sort of a zest and arrogance that comes with you know this being an athletic and a strong handsome figure uh, especially in Greek mythology uh, when he finds out about this idea that uh, there is a creature named uh, you know Pegasus which is a winged horse um, again a sort of a uh, you know a creature that has come from Medusa um, and uh, People cannot be able to capture it. Okay, so finally he does. Uh, you know he goes around uh, trying to figure out where he can find uh, Pegasus and all. And then over time he is able to uh, not just uh, become friendly with Pegasus, he's able to ride it. Okay, but uh, because of his past, you know, again we won't go into the past of what he had done. But because he had done a certain, uh, you know, he was accused of a certain crime. The king, you know, King Iobates, uh, this thing again, name's not important, but King Iobates, you know, decided to give him a task which involved him to, uh, you know, basically the king wanted him dead. You know, he, he didn't like the Belephron as a character and he wanted him dead, but he couldn't kill the thing because in Greek, uh, uh, Greek uh, hospitality is very, very important. So what he did was he's like, he gave him a option to go vanquish a creature that had been devastating the lands there named Chimera, you, saying, uh, you know, uh, Chimera, okay? What he had known about Chimera, apart from the descriptions and all, was that this creature had scorched the earth and uh, their victims and all were, uh, you know, either flooding from the scene, some had been poisoned, some had been mauled, some had been burnt. Uh, it, it was all over the thing. So finally, uh, Belephron, decided to, um, you know, confront this beast on, on top of Pegasus. Uh, he goes soaring high, looking for signs where this chimera as a creature would be there. He started, he noticed a smoke coming out from a fire, uh, this thing, and then he noticed people running from that fiery uh, place itself. And then he noticed the creature. Um, when he circled around, the creature was able to look at him. Uh, but the problem was that uh, any place, the you know, he would go, the creature was, a uh, creature always had some of its eyes on it, okay? Uh, and going closer was very dangerous because the you know there was a fire coming out of its mouths. Um, there was uh, you know if you go to, uh, you know from behind it you would get bitten uh, bitten from it and all. So he had to come up with a plan. So what uh, Belafron did was he took a spear uh, with lead uh, you know instead of a metal tip, and he kind of tried to find a spot where he could uh, do that. And then as soon as the creature opened its mouth, uh, you know it went and put it uh, inside before it could uh, belch out fire and the 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 spear lodged into its throat uh, and the fire ultimately melted the uh, the lead piece which uh, you know made the creature choke on its uh, you know on its own self and ultimately died of association and in doing so he was able to cut the heads and go back to the kingdom itself okay so now that i've told you the story okay you guys have to guess which one is the chimera Hmm? The time starts now. Come on, guys. Hmm. I see a lot of answers. Last five seconds, guys. Awesome. I think uh, most of you have got it, uh, this thing. Uh, and you're right, a lot of people got the third one right. Uh, I did put the clue of like, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, ultimately fire coming out of the things and the fact that it had a say. So Chimera was a creature that was considered, first of all, it was a, it was a female creature. It was referred as she. And, uh, you know, it was one of the creatures that had multiple siblings coming from the monster Typhon. Okay. Uh, and the, the composite of the creature was it was a lion with a goat's head. And uh, interestingly, it has a, a tail of a snake, you know. Uh, what's very interesting is in many of the, you know, many of the versions, it's the goat that used to belch out fire. So imagine the, the most scariest of all the, the four heads was actually the goat, you know, which used to belch out the fire. But in this rendition, it is the, you know, the fire seems to be coming out of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the lion itself. And what's interesting is despite all the male heads, it's still considered female. 
Okay, so that's there. Uh, this is another version of the creature. So that just to give you a thing, in many of the uh, uh, this rendition, it it also has a dragon head. Um, by the way, the other uh, creatures you must have heard of Hydra. You know, again, Marvel fans out there must have heard of the you know the creature Hydra, where you have multiple heads and all. Uh, and uh, Wendigo is another sort of a ghost kind of a feature, uh, very common in American TV shows and all, and things like Supernaturals and other shows where Wendigo is always a monster and all. And Minotaur, as you must have heard, where there is a man's head, uh, you know, a, a bull of a you know bull head and a man's body in itself. Okay. In fact, Chimera is a term that in English means an idea that is so fantastical it's hard to imagine. So that has come from this word, the Greek uh, creature, chimera, you know, chimera. So chimeric, uh, you know, a chimeral sort of a thing is basically the idea of, a, you know, idea that is so fantastical. Okay. These are some of the scenes of Bellefron trying to jump and sort of a thing and ultimately lodge the you know, spear with the, you know, the, uh, the lead tip inside its, uh, you know, mouth sort of a thing, you know. What's very interesting is, you know, most of the Greek stories always involve these heroes killing a monster without ever trying to understand the backstory of why this monster is hunting. What, what if this monster needs to hunt, you know? Uh, it's almost like the idea of killing a monster is all about glory. So that's a very, very Greek thing to, uh, you know, do. Okay, uh, hope you guys had fun. We'll play another uh, this thing, uh, another type of a game here. Hmm? Uh, are you guys enjoying this, uh, you know, activities? Absolutely. Awesome. So now we will do another thing. And this again involves getting, you know, uh, who gets it first uh, itself. What I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you facts, you know, uh, mythology facts. Okay. And uh, then you have to guess the name of a creature. Now, if you can get the name of the creature, great. Okay. If at least uh, the thing, I, I would be honest, uh, you know, obviously this involves you guys knowing some things, but even if you don't get the name of a creature, I will ask you a question, which is which is this creature associated with? Basically, a question. If you get that, that is also considered right. Okay. So there are just levels in which you can get a hint, and each of the hints will provide you an answer. Okay. So let's play the first round, and you'll get it. Hmm? So now you have to guess who this is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And by the way, I mean, my hint is going to be cryptic. So even if you get who am I talking about, that itself will be an answer itself. So, so the first hint is there is a renowned archer who decides to do a penance on a tabletop when he notices something in front of him. Okay. Uh, and this creature is made up of nine different animals. Okay. And is holding a lotus. Okay. But then when the, uh, when the warrior, this archer, um, you know, raises its weapon, uh, it realizes that this being is not an ordinary thing. It's actually just a divinity itself and it bows to it. So first of all, the question is, who do you think is this creature? Okay. If you can get it, you know. So there are two questions to it. One is you can get the name of the creature. The other is, you know, uh, if you can get who the divinity is itself. Just, just take a shot, guys. There's, not, there's no wrong answer. I mean, remember one thing about mythology, even if all of you get it, uh, you know, if all of you get a wrong answer, that becomes a new mythology. That's the fun part of mythology, you know. It's just a new variation. Okay. Interesting, Vibor. Okay. Fine. Uh, Vibor's got like one this thing. It's uh, Arjun's the archer. Lakshman is the archer. Okay, that's another. Uh... Okay, cool. I'll show you guys the uh, this thing, and then we'll. So this is the creature. Now, does this help in anyone getting a name? If if you guys know the thing. Not really, to be honest. Looks seeing it for the first time. Never seen it. So the name of the creature is Navgunjar. Okay. Now, uh, what's interesting is this creature is coming from an Odia story, and uh, you know uh, the fact that it holds a nine and Gunjar is basically like a sort of a manifestation of it. You know, do you notice how chimeric it looks like? It has a very chimeric sort of a body with the snake tail and all sort of a thing, which again tells you that mythology may have been, you know, they must have had some common points. Okay. Um, okay. So that that's fine. Uh, the, even if you don't get this thing, uh, can you guys get the divinity? Who the divinity is? Lakshmi, okay. Anyone else? Vishnu. 
Um, okay, I'll show you guys the answer. The answer is it's Krishna. Krishna. I mean, you uh, you know, think about this. It's an archer, which is good. You know, some of you guys guessed it as uh, Arjun. Some of you thought it was Lakshman. So there, there could only be two deities. So uh, Vishwas are technically right. Uh, Vishnu, I mean, Krishna, oh, sorry, Krishna. Krishna avatar is uh, considered. Um, but like in the story goes that uh, you know Arjun was so uh, his first reaction when he saw this creature was to kill it, right? But then when he realized that this creature was so big, it's sort of a thing that was so terrified that it realized its divinity and it put it it had decided to put its bow down and ultimately like you know pay a reverence to it. So what uh, Krishna was trying to teach Arjun basically in this uh, thing was that despite you learning everything, nature will always fascinate you. There will be always something that the divinities can manifest that will be beyond comprehension. A very different lesson from the Belafron story, if you think about it, right? So, yeah, this was there. Okay? Now, I know this was a little tougher, guys. Um, you know, and uh, the idea was just this thing. So, even if you don't know the name of the creature and all, try to guess which, uh, you know, which story or which characters I'm talking about. So, I think we both got Arjun. That's great. Uh, Vishwas, technically, you got the thing. So, we'll just play another round of this kind of uh, thing. Okay. Uh, cool. So guess who this is, okay? Um, from the story, the first story is that um, in trying to find his people who were kidnapped by a powerful being, a known warrior enters the you know underworld, okay? And he encounters a creature made up of um, you know a crocodile and a monkey, okay? Um, who's guarding the gates and ultimately like you know bows down to him because he seems to understand that this is someone related to him and. After fighting, they realize that equally man, the creature tells this warrior that you're actually my father. Okay. Um, the story goes further, you know, where the creature ultimately allows the, you know, the father to go inside and rescue the two warriors and all. Okay. But by this, this story and uh, this thing, care to venture a guess who this warrior is or who this creature is? Anyone? Okay. Ishant, you've said uh, Hanuman. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to show you uh, the creature and the other thing. So the creature's name is Makar Dwarsh, okay? And uh, the the question that becomes is, ki, who's his father? Anyone wants to take a guess? Mm -hmm. just, just, just venture a guess. Listen, there's no wrong answer, guys. I mean, there is a wrong answer, but there's no harm in getting a wrong answer. Okay, I see like uh, we've got one other thing, Yamra, that's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so just to uh, think, tell you guys the, the answer, uh, so Ishant, you kind of got it right, is Hanuman. So the story actually comes from, uh, you know, another, uh, it's not from the Valmiki Ramayana, but the story is that Hanuman, uh, finds out that Ahi Ravan, you know, who is sort of a different version of a Ravan, uh, you know, takes uh, Ram and Lakshman, kidnaps them and takes them to Patalok. So he ultimately comes to, uh, you know, he, he goes to the gate of uh, Patalok and he comes across this weird creature who looks like a crocodile and a monkey. And uh, paying respect, you know, ultimately tells him that you can't go. And then they end up fighting and they're almost equally mad, which is very surprising for someone like Hanuman, who's one of the most powerful beings in the world. Uh, but after fighting, he tells him that, you know, you're my father and Hanuman's confused. I mean, Hanuman is never, he's taken a Brahmachari, uh, you know, he's taken a celibate uh, oath, right? So he doesn't know how can that happen. So that's when Makar Duaj tells him a story that you remember when you had gone to Lanka and you had burnt the Lanka with your tail, then you decided to like, you know, dip your tail in the sea huh, before coming back. I mean, we know all that story, right? But what Hanuman and what we did not know about it was that when he was coming out, Hanuman's sweat ultimately dipped down into the ocean and it was swallowed by one of the fishes. Uh, one of, sorry, it was swallowed by one of the crocodile. Okay. Uh, and this crocodile, Makar, that's what it's known, is basically the one that, uh, you know, ultimately gave birth to Makar Dwaj and told him about the Hanuman and all. And uh, through his, uh, you know, ultimately when he grew up, he joined the Patal Lok and rose up the rank and became one of the most important persons for Ahiravan. Okay. Now, Obviously, at this point of time, Hanuman's confused what to do. So uh, what uh, Makarzoj gives him an idea is that, uh, uh, why don't you tie me up 
Okay. And uh, you can go inside and fight. And then there's a whole story of Haruman going inside and then, you know, uh, telling uh, this thing Ram that uh, there is a way to defeat Ahiravan and all. Again, there's a whole story about that. We can discuss that later sort of a thing. But the point is Haruman somehow ends up rescuing, uh, you know, the thing. And after killing Ahiravan, they make Makarudwaraj into uh, the, the leader of Patal Lok, you know, the lord of Patal Lok. So that's another story. And many of uh, the, the thing, uh, you know, the Jester the community and all, they uh, trace their ancestry back to Makarudwaraj. Okay. Cool. Uh, last activity. Uh, we also have 10 minutes and all. I see a lot of people are dropping by. It's uh, dropping off. That's great. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But uh, let's just uh, play one more, uh, you know, activity. Now, this is a fun round. And uh, this one requires... Um, you know, first typing and then speaking. Okay. So keep your mics on, uh, you know, uh, like uh, mics open and all. Okay. What I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to tell you a mythological statement. Okay. And it has something wrong. Okay. You guys have to type in the word Galat. Okay. Because remember, in mythology, the first thing you always have is people like correcting each other. Okay. No, no, no. That's not the story. There's a right story and all. Okay. So, Let's actually make that into a game where I'll tell you a statement. You say Galat. The first person that says Galat can speak up. But the condition is that before you correct uh, this thing, you have to say the word Shastro Ke Anusar and then say what is wrong with the statement. Okay. If you don't say Shastro Ke Anusar and you still say that's not counted, then you you know some, someone else gets the chance to do it. Okay. So just remember Galat to, you know, as, as a buzzer to write it, whoever writes Galat first, is uh, you know going to get an answer and all and feel free to interrupt anytime you can say galat when i'm reading out the statement also okay uh, got it should i move ahead yes okay um okay to defeat the shape shifting mahisha sur the devas and uh, gods combined their feminine energy to create the warrior named Durga, while each of them had a, you know, gave a special gift. Okay, so Indra gave her the Vajra, uh, Varuna gave her the conch, Agni gave her the spear and missile, uh, Vayu gave her a bow, Vishwakarma gave her, uh, you know, gave her his axe, and Shiva gave her, uh, you know, gave her a lion. What is wrong with the statement? Remember the rules, guys. Okay. Anyone feels anything? This thing type the word Galat. Okay. Okay, Vishwas. Great. Uh, you're allowed to. Yeah, this thing. What is wrong with the statement? So, uh, Shastra Anusar, Indra is not her. No, it's he. Oh, no, Indra okay. gave her. Uh, you oh, know, gave sorry, her. Sorry, sorry, her yeah, that's uh, that's not the problem. This not sure if Indra had Vajra, so maybe you might consider that. Indra's other thing. That's not what's wrong with the statement. Okay, Aditya, great. Go ahead. Shastron ke anusar, uh, Shiva didn't give her a lion. Great. I think you've got what is wrong with the statement. Uh, if you are able to tell me who gave her the lion, I think you can, uh, you know, you have got the right answer. Okay. You've got what is wrong with the statement. Right. Uh, lion, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. But I think uh, I know the other answer, but I don't know. Who's so that uh, you pondered what is wrong. Anyone else can, uh, you know, now that uh, Aditya has, uh, you know, pigeonholed or, or, you know, got the point of what is wrong with the statement. Anyone wants to care to venture a guess of what is wrong with the statement? Like as in what, uh, you know, what would be the right answer then? Come on, guys. Anyone? Just take a guess, guys. You know, you have nothing to lose. Aditya has already narrowed on what is wrong. So it's a question of what could be the right statement. Ishant, you have to, uh, you know, uh, speak up, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't really know, like, uh, what, what the, who actually gave Durga the line, but I think it's a tiger from the images that I remember. So two things, Prashanta, you forgot to say Shastra Ke Anusar and second of all, Shastra Ke Anusar, uh, Shastra ke anusar <laughs> the, the Vahan or Vahikal, it, it is a tiger, I think. So um, in many, my, uh, you know, in many stories, uh, it has been tiger, but uh, generally according to the Shastra, it's actually the first one is lion. Okay, cool. I'll show you guys the answer if no one is uh, getting it. Uh, uh, you, there is no wrong answer as such, but you're right, you're right that there was uh, Shiva. 
uh, it was Himavat who gave, uh, you know, Hima, uh, saying, Himavat is basically the lord of mountains, Himalayas, and he gave Durga name Dawan. And very interestingly, Dawan is actually a Tibetan kind of a name. So this is where t Tibetan culture also seeps into Indian mythology. Okay. Uh, by the way, Shiv gave her a trident, and many ways the Shiv was uh, Shiv like Vishnu and all came kind of gave her the you know the energy itself. So even if you are told that Shiv gave her the trident, that would have been a right answer. Okay. Um, but but great, I think uh, you know. Uh, congratulations on Aditya getting at least what is wrong with the statement. It's cool. Uh, we'll just play. I have a question. Yeah, is, isn't that Durga name Chamundi? Because I uh, was so, supposed so to. Durga, Durga has many variations. So um, so to be honest, when it comes to Shakti, right, they don't have a very clear logical division sort of a thing. In many of the versions, uh, Durga is just another uh, you know root of Shakti. And uh, Chamundi is another root of Shakti. Chamundi is basically the more uh, feral root of Shakti. So mm -hmm. you're kind of right. I mean, it's not a, you know, it's not either or. It depends on the sect and depends on the which Shastra you're looking at and all. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, the, in the story of Mahisha Sur, it's the all the god who realized that, you know, ki their masculine way of fighting was not what's going to help. So, and Mahisha Sur had taken a sort of a, you know, Vardhan from uh, Brahma that, uh, you know, no, uh, no man can kill me. And uh, he never said no woman can kill me. So technically he, he had a loophole in his argument and which is where he ultimately got defeated by uh, Durga, you know, again, mm -hmm. this is where it shows that, you know, this guy in a very chauvinistic way was underestimating women, uh, you know, in a very sexist way. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and finally met his end accordingly. Okay. Uh, lesson to be learned there. <laughs> Cool. Second round. Okay. Uh, this is going to be, I think, uh, just the last round sort of a thing. And then we can end towards it. Okay. Now that you guys know, uh, just do it. And by the way, guys, I see a few people answering it. I think all of you guys can answer, you know, uh, this thing, you know, so feel free to answer it. I see at least 10 people there. So you, there's nothing to lose. And if one of you guys even guesses what, what is wrong with the statement, others can at least venture it, you know, so that's the point of it. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is from Greek mythology. Okay. And the story is, uh, you know, uh, the king of the Greek god, Zeus, has a very strange and peculiar transformations to get to the women he wants. As we've known that Zeus has this thing of wanting to get with as many women as possible. Um, and for that, he has changed into many forms, you know, so be it a beautiful swan, a white bull, an eagle, an ant, a fancy peacock, a serpentine dragon, a cook, uh, you know, helpless cuckoo, a wild satire, and even a shower of golden coins. What do you think is wrong with the statement? It's okay if you don't know it. Just, just you know, take a wild venture. The answer may surprise you guys. What seems completely out of character for someone like Zeus, based on whatever you've heard or read about him, or you think you know him? The helpless cuckoo. And. Uh, Lavanya, you forgot uh, to say Shastro ke anusar, okay? Shastro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Shastro ke anusar, uh, what is it like? Uh, how do I phrase it? Sorry. Shastro ke anusar, and then you say what is wrong. Huh. Shastro ke anusar, helpless cuckoo seems little out of context, right? Doesn't okay. really align with his personality. Uh, technically, so help, he there is a story where he turns into a helpless cuckoo, so that is not what's wrong, okay? Great, you guys have eliminated one. Anyone else? Uh, 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 okay, you guys don't have to type the galat. This thing just say whoever wants to say, it, just say the word uh, and just go ahead with it. Okay. Take a while, guys. Guys, there's I mean, telling you, there's no wrong. You know, you can't get a negative point, so it's not a. Anyone? What seems completely weird, and I think uh, Lamanya pointed out a helpless cuckoo, and I said that is not there. So, what is the other option that could be? You know, a shower of golden coins. <laughs> interesting. Uh, no, Ishan, uh, there is a story about him turning into a golden coin to get to a woman, and that is freaky, but that's what uh, the thing is there. Okay. Cool. One more uh, this thing. Anyone wants to guess it before we reveal the uh, what's wrong and all? Anup has written uh, this thing. Uh, okay. Anup, you haven't uh, you know put the phrase, but okay, great. Uh, <clears throat> someone wants to say that uh, thing. 
I think it may scare off people. That is true. Oh wait. Okay, and sir, I think Serpentine Dragon is uh, out of context because I think honestly that might actually scare people off than uh, helping them get closer to people. So interesting. So Anup again, uh, I will. I hate to burst uh, this thing, but there is a story where he did uh, get to the thing. Uh, and just to give you a context, ZS sometimes ZS does not have a concept of consent in many of the stories. You know, it's more about you know. either seducing or either assaulting in some some situations and all again not a lesson to be derived from it but the point is zeus has a, this thing um so technically this idea of scaring is not something that he was very worried about okay Obviously. cool i'll um, i'll show you what is wrong okay <laughs> then let's see if you guys can get why that is wrong okay if 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 you can take a wildest guess of why do you think that could be wrong so the answer the what is wrong with the statement is that you know he never became a fancy peacock Well, I mean, I've written a small ad. Uh, technically, that he he has a story of a small. I'll I'll tell you guys the thing. Okay, so just to give you guys the uh, you know the answer, the only reason he he never became a peacock is because his wife Hera, the peacock is a very sacred animal to Hera. So and he could never. The Greek gods have always had this thing that you know that they cannot insult another god. Humans, it's fine. Kill them, you know, you know, assault them, and all is fine. But you'd never piss off another god. And the reason he never turned to, um, you know, uh, Hera is because Hera was a very sacred animal. Uh, the uh, sorry, the peacock was a very sacred animal to Hera. Okay, that's why he never turned into a peacock. Now, just to give you guys the storylines of uh, the thing, so um, he does become a beautiful swan, and uh, there's a uh, princess called uh, Leda. You know, um, ultimately considered beautiful and sort of a thing. He becomes this helpless. You know, like a beautiful swan comes near her, she caresses the swan, and ultimately, like you know, they end up mating, and like you know, she's preg- impregnated and all. The white bull is also a story where Europa, as a as this thing is, um, you know, uh, she rides. Uh, you know, she finds this white bull coming from a sea. Uh, she gets very excited, uh, rides on him, and he. This guy takes her far away, and uh, just because he likes her so much, he keeps her in this one land away, so that Hera, because he always has to cheat on Hera away from all these other people, so he ends up uh, doing that. And in fact, uh, you, this thing uh, Europa leads to the name Europe. That's where the name Europe comes from, because that's where he let. uh you know this woman stay and ultimately become the mother of all the descendants out there uh there's a story of eagle also where uh, he becomes an eagle and uh, there's a woman named uh, selemi who does that uh there's a story of ant also uh, saying uh, you know uh, he does become an ant in the situation uh the in fact he becomes a cuckoo also to uh, you know to please hera when he wants to he wants to marry hera he becomes a cuckoo and the golden chaver is with uh, this thing uh, uh, danny there's a there's a princess named danny whose father knew uh, had a prophecy that his her child is going to kill him so he locked her into the cell with just a upper window uh, which had a little bit of air and sort of a thing and zeus still wanted to you know to ultimately get to her so he became a you know he became a shower of golden coins came on top of her this thing and ultimately you know impregnated her so yes that's how crazy greek gods are okay So yeah, that uh, <clears throat> that was the thing that concludes our session itself and all. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Uh, I mean, the idea was not to uh, you know not to just like you know make it competitive, but also for you guys to just learn and find something fun. If anything, it just should uh, inspire your curiosity towards mythologies itself and all. Uh, but uh, any feedback, anything uh, you know, uh, you guys have any suggestions? very very interesting uh, session anupri like lot of the stories um, i'm personally interested in read much about it but i think uh, after the session it made me uh, want to know like what happened why was it like this so i think it's a very uh, inspiring and uh, curious like it made me curious. very nice thank you akansha and now if you have any questions about a you know uh, any curiosity about any particular story let me know i can always send you a story or i can just tell you the story on a chat or a oh, yeah sure uh, definitely you know i mean that's the point of mythology guys i mean the idea is to just be you know like hey why did you do that and then i can tell you a story and you can go down the rabbit hole if you are interested so feel free to do that okay. but uh, thank you thank you for that yeah yeah thank like you. i i agree with uh, like you know what akansha is adding like to add to that like it's uh, so a lot of these stories are something that we have heard a lot uh, like as growing up as kids but to revisit them uh, in such a setting and in such an interesting way it's like it's fun so yeah i'm i'm really happy that you know you have you took this session today <laughs> <laughs> it's you, like uh, because uh, in the morning right you want to listen to something which is uh, interesting right or something which gets your mind going and this is exactly that 
so mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's very pretty interesting yeah thank you that's that's great um nice i definitely have more things like that i have uh, in fact i have uh, you know more ideas and more this thing of these kind of uh, you know quizzes and all i i do these things a lot uh, you know just as a uh, this thing on my uh-huh. own channel and also we definitely do this once in a while if you guys are interested uh, more stories more this things and also happy to do that but yeah, uh, thank you actually, yeah this was a like, short short story sessions or something definitely yeah so a long really back we used to have anupri i think uh, before you joined um, uh, there used to be a quiz uh, sort of a thing which was which would happen weekly right and um, the quiz was not exactly about mythical beasts or in or anything in particular um but uh, you know you would have uh, some design related topics some general topics and all so yeah so like it, 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 if you could do that that would be really awesome that's, that's a good point because yeah. yeah i do have yeah. an idea rishab uh, regarding mythology bringing mythology and design i'll reach out to you you know maybe next week and all okay Uh, yeah, yeah. you could do a session awesome. you know, i do have something that i think uh, but anyway this was a way to for me to test it i also i just love testing with people and seeing how they are reacting and all so this is good to know if you like it all i was planning to have a more robust score keeping uh, amit was supposed to help out with uh, the score and all but then i realized that you know it would have been a little too cutthroat and <laughs> So, um yeah anyway, like, yeah all these stories also in one way or another are uh, what we are seeing right in animes and all the other we see there's a lot of inspiration that that can be clearly definitely yeah clearly, clearly associated so yeah it's, it's really interesting to actually it's like a food for imagination yeah yeah and now uh, this thing ishan i'm telling you like you will be surprised at how many stories are actually taken from mythology or basically their mythology itself you know like the story itself is a mythology that comes out and saying especially yeah. for anime and uh, this thing you will notice it but yeah, definitely check it out what's the most skip for one because i'm a big fan of dragon ball right so oh. uh, all these ones and then solving the problem ki some some rakshas comes in and ask for something which is then supposed to be uh, you know conquered by some sort of a god is exactly what dragon ball does they have these dragon balls they give you a wish and then they try to solve and work around that wish to, you know avoid trouble so it's like it's very similar when you when you see yeah. from from a different perspective yeah also i would uh, just urge that, you know indian mythology is fascinating by itself but other mythologies when you kind of read other mythologies and all right it kind of changes the way you think of your own story so let me check yeah. it out and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions doubts or any this thing i can give you recommendations i can tell you stories uh this is an area that i'm very very interested in so we will do that and yeah. thank you thank you for uh, doing participating and you know staying for the session so have you have you played uh, god of war like it is basically on <laughs> yeah yeah i played yeah, one sort of my thought it's very interesting also that yeah it. yeah i mean i love all these uh, mythology based games and sort of a thing so definitely play that a lot yeah. okay dude let's uh, let's just meet something we you know have a big talk about it i am also very much interested <laughs> We we will get Nishan. Definitely reach out to me, and uh, we will definitely uh, you know discuss it. I can even you know refer things and all. So for that, okay. Okay. Great session, dude. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rishab. Thank you, Ishan. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day, guys. Okay. Have a good day. Hmm.